Good to meet you, Steve. I like your background. Uh, thank you. I was going to make a joke, but I'll just say thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, because no one is watching, I am just curious, which of your four Emmys is your favorite? <laughs> I mean, they're all as shiny and pointy as each other. And um, yeah, it was a, an amazing experience to win. You know, it, it's very, we have a very different uh, approach in Britain. We don't really like winning things. It seems a bit vulgar. So it's fun to be in the States where people celebrate winning and uh, are happy for you. I'll, I won't press you any further. Um, the series, uh, first of all, congrats on the series. I, I have a bunch of questions. Um, how did you decide on eight episodes? Was it ever going to be less or more? Um, I thought eight was a good number. I mean, there was a lot to get in. There was 27 years of events. Um, but I felt like, I don't know how many you've seen of them. I've seen four. Okay, yeah. So the first four are pretty much happen all within quite a narrow time frame because I really want people to get invested in the characters and their relationship and and kind of get to know that world. And then I think as so often often happens in life, the next four we really race through the years and Marty it's the kind of mirror Marty's feeling of just losing track of time and not kind of realizing where all that time goes, uh, which is a feeling I'm familiar with. And we kind of play with time. We go backwards and forwards a bit in uh, some of the episodes in the in the next block. So it seemed like a good a good balance. Um, and yeah, I think I think eight is a is a good number. I think um, you know, there's a couple of episodes without Phyllis and we miss her. And so it's great to get her back in at the end as well. Um, what was the toughest stuff that ended up, what was the toughest stuff to pull off with the time and budget that you had? I mean, we were filming during the pandemic, so that was immediately complicated. Um, and because of that, we were filming LA for New York, so that also brings a whole bunch of problems. Um, so in practical terms, those were the tough things. And I think on a creative level, just wanting to make sure um, that I told the story fairly, that I didn't make any judgments on any of the characters, that I let the audience decide for themselves and, you know, give each character a kind of show treat them with compassion and not sort of label or blame anyone. Uh, what's interesting for me, when I heard about this story and I heard you guys were gonna make it, I'm like, how are they gonna portray, like, who, this can't be true. Like, how does a psychologist take over someone's life? And then as I was watching the series, I'm like, oh, it happens tiny little bits each time. And, and then all of a sudden you don't even realize, anyway, well, I'm giving you a compliment, but it's, um, I, I guess, <laughs> this could happen to almost anyone you know the way that That's, this, yeah yeah could you sort of talk I about that yeah i totally agree i think uh, often people's response to the podcast was what a banana story that would never happen to me and i kind of thought i don't think that's true i think that could happen to anyone and i think marty i think it's a really universal story because marty's experiences of bereavement of anxiety of uh, splitting up in a relationship, you know, they're things we've all experienced. And in the last 19 months with the pandemic, with lockdown, we've also all experienced feeling isolated and uncertain about the future and afraid. So I feel like we could all be Marty. We, in, in a vulnerable moment, we could all be Marty. And we've all had relationships, whether with family members or friendships or romantic relationships that have started really well and then there are a few alarm bells a few red flags but you kind of you miss them or you ignore them or you the person wins you round and Paul Rudd is just so good at charming us again every time we start to doubt him so I, I, I think you're exactly right it could happen to any of us um, and it's very hard 
to notice when it's happening. And then once you're in deep, it's incredibly hard to get out of it. Was there anything when you were researching and getting ready to make it that you heard that just really shocked you, just really took you back? I think because I did feel some weird, maybe because I have always written for very unlikable, irredeemable characters, I did have this weird sympathy for Ike when I heard that he had also um, encouraged other patients to cut off ties with their families and that other patients had left him money in their will. I found that pretty hard to get back from. <laughs> But, um, I, yeah, I completely agree. Um, I, I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of the series, besides the COVID of it all. Um, what do you think might surprise people to learn about the making of the show? I mean, I don't know about the making of it, um, but I think what will surprise people is they'll see it's a Will and Paul show and they might be expecting a kind of bro comedy and what actually they're getting as an incredibly moving and emotional and tragic story that, you know, I think both actors give extraordinary performances, very moving performances. And I think that might take people by surprise. Um, I completely agree. I'm also curious, how many takes were ruined because they weren't happy with their accent? <laughs> well, uh, there are a lot of takes ruined because they kept making each other laugh. Um, <laughs> You know, it's very tricky being a British person and I'm not the greatest person to judge their accents, but they kept each other in check. There were a lot of New Yorkers on set, so uh, they were being policed um, by people who were much more in a much better position than me to, uh, to know if their accent was correct or not. How did it work? Because obviously this is streaming, so you don't really have to hit like certain time marks in terms of commercials or whatever. So how did you end up with a lot of deleted scenes? Was it, um, did you, you know what I mean? Like, what was it like in the editing room? It was very liberating, actually. That is the joy of, of writing something for Apple or for any streamer. And that I, I said to them, what I really want to do is write like a 30 minute and then let it breathe and let, and keep everything and not have to make those heartbreaking cuts where we lose beautiful character pieces or important plot moments. And so that's what we did. So most episodes are kind of 40 to 45 minutes long. And that was, that's a great length, you know, that's, you can pack a lot in, but you can also take your time to enjoy, enjoy the moments and enjoy the performances. I completely agree. I want to say congrats on what I've seen thus far. Can't wait to finish. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much indeed.